This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Linear programming. Now, uh, I must warn you, this will take um, a reasonably long amount of time compared with the other chapters. For that reason, I'll break it down, uh, split into several lectures. Uh, and the problem is that although, uh, for reasons you'll see as we go through, you can't be expected to do an entire linear programming exercise in one objective test question, but any bit of what we do certainly is askable, and the only way it really makes any sense is if I go through an entire example. So we're going to have to go through a complete example from beginning to, to end, um, and then we will have covered everything that you can be asked. Um, to introduce it, just uh, very quickly, you'll remember in an earlier chapter, I can't remember which one it was, chapter three, I think, we talked about limited resources, uh, and we did um, conventional um, limited resource uh, allocation and uh, throughput accounting, but we only have one limited resource. Linear programming is a situation where you have more than one limited resource which makes it a bit more complicated. And to show you the sort of problem uh, we're faced with and how we go about solving it, uh, can you look at exercise one on the first page of the chapter? Have a quick read with me. It says, Peter makes two types of chairs, the executive and the standard. The data related to each is as follows. Well, you can see uh, standard uses two kilos of material and executive uses four kilos. Uh, labour, a standard takes five hours of labour, six hours for an executive. And the contribution, it's been calculated for us, six dollars and nine dollars. Now we know how to calculate contribution, selling price less variable costs. Uh, we don't have enough information to work it out ourselves and irrelevant. We, in this one, we are told the contribution per unit. Uh, jumping uh, two lines, we want the optimal production plan to generate maximum contribution. But the problem is, the two lines uh, I jumped over, there's a maximum of 80 kilos of material available each week. So whatever happens, however many of each chair we make, we can't use more than 80 kilos. Uh, there's a maximum of 180 labour hours a week. So again, however many we end up making of each, we can't use more than 180. Demand for standard chairs is unlimited, so we can produce and sell as, as many as we want of those. Whereas the maximum demand for executive chairs is 10. Uh, and, and so whatever we end up doing, we certainly, there's no point in making more than 10 executives. But there's our problem. We want maximum contribution. How many uh, of each chair should we produce? Given that we can't use in total more than 80 kilos of material, 180 hours of labour, uh, we can't produce more than 10 executive chairs. Well, I'll split the, the problem into stages. And the first thing uh, we need to do is uh, write down uh, what the problem is algebraically. And it's certainly not hard, this, uh, but we're going to use uh, symbols. I'll let S equal the number of standard chairs. I'll let E equal the number of executive chairs uh, per week, the number we will produce per week in each case. Uh, use any symbols you like. Some people prefer using X and Y. It doesn't matter. Uh, you can have a think yourself why I've chosen S and E. Uh, but finally, I'll let C be the total contribution. So I'll define my symbols, but now we write the problem in terms effectively of equations. Uh, and let's look first of all at our constraints, our limitations, 
constraints, same thing. First of all, material. Now remember, I'm producing S standard chairs in the executive, so how much material are we going to need? Each standard chair needs two kilos, so we'll need the S chairs will need two S kilos. In addition, we're going to produce five executives, uh, sorry, E executives, and each executive takes four kilos. So in total, for E to produce the executives. So that's how much material we'll use. But whatever total we end up coming to, the maximum is 80. Now it doesn't say we've got to use all 80 kilos, you know, if we don't need it all, we don't buy it all. But the total we use to S plus 4E, it must be less than or equal to 80. So whatever solution we end up with for S and E, 2S plus 4E must be less than or equal to 80. In a similar way, labour. Um, S executives each takes five hours each, so in total we'll need five S hours. H executive takes six hours, E executives so six E. So that's how much labour we'll need. But again, however much we end up using, it can't be more, it must be less than or equal to the total available of 180. Uh, what else? Uh, demand for standard chairs is unlimited, so any answer you could end up with it for S. However, executive chairs, the most we can sell is 10. I said earlier, uh, it doesn't mean we have to produce 10, but there's certainly no point in producing more than 10. So, E, the executive chairs, our final answer, it must be less than or equal to 10. So, I hope not too much problem there. There could be any number of uh, constraints on us. However, um, uh, just two more, which are fairly automatic. The point is, as you'll see later, we're going to solve this algebraically using S and E, and in theory any numbers could come out. Uh, but obviously, from a practical point of view, uh, whatever answer we get for S and E, we may end up producing zero standard or zero executive, we don't know yet, but we can't produce a negative number, that would be silly. And so we've got what we call the non-negative constraints. Uh, perhaps an obvious one, but um, an important one if you were asked to list the constraints. Uh, both S, it can't be negative, S must be greater than or equal to zero. Uh, similarly, E, whatever answer we end up with, it must be greater than or equal to zero. So there are constraints. Whatever answer we end up with, E and S must satisfy all of those uh, equations. Uh, but finally, for setting up the problem, um, our objective. Our objective is to maximise the contribution, which uh, I defined as C. And let's write an equation uh, for C, because surely, however many we end up producing, whatever the answer turns out to be for S and for E. Each standard makes six dollars, so in total, six S from standard shares. Each executive takes nine dollars, so in total, nine E for an executive. And there we are in terms of what we call formulating the problem. And although clearly we, we've yet to find a solution, uh, certainly you're quite likely to get um, some objective test questions which are just asking you to formulate all or part of a linear programming problem. So I hope that makes sense. Again, there is the problem algebraically. We've got to find what values of S and D generate the maximum C contribution. 
without breaking any of those constraints. Now, um, if you've ever done this at school, at university uh, or anywhere, you might be aware there are actually two methods one could use to solve it. Uh, one method is something called simplex, uh, which isn't hard, but we just play around with the numbers. That's not in the syllabus. You won't be tested on the simplex method. Uh, what you'll be tested on is what we call the graphical method, where if you are asked to find a solution, we're going to do it, as you'll see, by drawing the graph and by um, showing on the graph what the constraints, what the objective is. Now, it's not going to be a question of you drawing a graph, but they can test that you understand what goes on the graph. Um, you could even be given a graph and expected to understand it. So we are going to go through the solution. However, I said I was going to break the problem up. There's, if you like, step one of formulating it. In the next lecture, I'll carry straight on from here, so make sure you've still got that in front of you. But we'll go through and we'll look at this graphical solution.